Welcome artists. In this video, you will learn about the art of caricature. You will learn to identify common characteristics of caricature as an art style, and we'll get an overview of what you will be learning in this unit. Please make sure to follow along on your note guide as you watch this presentation. Have you ever been to an amusement park like Six Flags or on vacation in New Orleans or New York City and seen artists on the street drawing people's portraits for money? These are caricature artists. A caricature is a drawing of a real person which distorts or exaggerates certain features, but still retains a likeness. In other words, it's an exaggerated piece of portrait art. Exaggeration is the key word here, or another way to think of it as, as a caricature is a portrait with the volume turned up. This style of exaggerated portraiture has a long history. Even Leonardo da Vinci has many caricature sketches in his sketchbooks. He called them grotesques. The story goes that he used to follow people in the streets that he thought had interesting features, and he would use them as inspiration for his drawings of both saints and gargoyles. Studying all types of people was part of his quest for discovering the ideal proportions of beauty. Even the artist Claude Monet, who you might know from his Water Lilies paintings, drew caricatures for some extra money. Caricatures have stuck around through the years because they are, popular, they are a popular method for poking fun at society's celebrities or political figures. You can often say something through artwork that it would be dangerous to say with words, such as in this poster that was made to kind of mo poke fun at uh, the King of France. Oops, sorry, go back one. For this reason, you'll often see caricatures used today in political cartoons as a way to make commentary on current social issues. In this unit, we are going to try our hand at making our own caricatures. We will be using the American artist Tom Richmond as our guide for this unit as he is widely considered a king of caricature. He started his career by drawing caricatures at Six Flags Great America as a way to make money to pay for his college tuition. He continued practicing and refining his technique until ultimately he has been able to freelance as a caricature artist for such clients as Mad Magazine, National Geographic Kids, and the Cartoon Network, just to name a few. You can learn more about him and see examples of his work on his website. We will also be using many examples and images from his book, The Mad Art of Caricature. I will link the PDF to his book in our unit notes as well. According to Tom Richmond, there are three key elements that make a caricature a unique expression of art. They are recognizability, exaggeration, and statement. So let's look at what those are. First is recognizability. I kind of think Mr. Richmond made up this word, but it's effective because it sounds like what it means. A caricature should be recognizable as the person it is representing. Can you tell who the celebrity is in this caricature? What elements let you know who it is? If you guessed Tiger Woods, you would be correct. The artist not only incorporated Tiger's physical features, but he also added clothing and accessories like the polo shirt and the golf club to make him recognizable. And he poked a little fun at some uh, domestic disturbance that Tiger Woods went through a few years ago. Notice in this celebrity drawing, it doesn't show any facial features at all. Do you know who it is? What elements does Richmond use to make this subject recognizable? If you guess the guitarist Slash, you would be correct. He doesn't have any facial features, but he used his body positioning, his guitar, and his distinctive hair and hat to let us know who he was talking about in this image. So after recognizability, the second element of successful caricature art is exaggeration. Exaggeration means to enlarge beyond the realm of truth. If we look at this caricature of Arnold Schwarzenegger, we can see that his chin and mouth have really been enlarged and exaggerated to emphasize these distinctive features of his face. What do you see emphasized in this portrait of Katie Couric? 
She was a popular news anchor and kind of has this large distinctive smile that shows a bit of gums up here. So he really emphasized that in his portrait of Katie Couric. So that is exaggeration, picking one feature to make larger than life to kind of show their distinguishing features. While talking about exaggeration, it's important to note that caricatures can often be unflattering, but it is not our goal to make fun of the subject we are drawing. Unfortunately, over the years, caricatures have been used to reinforce negative racial stereotypes and have caused harm. The artist Al Hirschfeld was a popular caricature artist in the 1920s in America. During the Harlem Renaissance, he created many caricatures of African-American musicians that were very unflattering and problematic, as you can see here. Please remember, as you are drawing, that exaggeration should always be based on truthful observations of your subject. Don't get mean, just highlight the true characteristics of whoever you are drawing. The last element of caricaturing is statement. This just means to think about how your drawing can make a statement about the overall personality or essence of your subject. Look at how Richmond combined Conan O'Brien's signature hairstyle with his casual pose and friendly facial expression to describe his easygoing, charming, and likable personality. Notice how the body position that Richmond chose for Jon Stewart is very different from the pose for Conan O'Brien. Although both are comedians, Jon Stewart is known for using humor as social commentary, so this pose conveys his more serious personality. As is our motto for this class, good drawing always begins with careful observation. When you're doing a, a caricature, look closely at your subject to see which features really stand out and make their face unique. Then think how you can make your subject recognizable. What features can you exaggerate and highlight? And how will you choose to make a statement? So these are our three key features. Always keep that in mind as you're working on your caricature. As you go through this unit, you will get to practice the different components of a good caricature. You will learn about artistic choices for head shape and the squish and stretch principle. You will next learn that eyes and the, the eyes and the nose together make a T shape and we'll learn some techniques on how you can vary that basic shape to create expressive caricatures. You will take a deeper dive into, into developing expressive eyes and you will see examples of how to draw all the other parts of the face to create any expression you wish for your caricature. Lastly, you're gonna put it all together by drawing a caricature of yourself to finish off your self-portrait series. As always, take your time to practice, practice the skills throughout the unit, and I can't wait to see what you create. Have fun.